Hello, Math 2. This is Mrs. Bricky, and this is Unit 2, Lesson 3. Um, we've been working on solving equations by applying square roots, and in this lesson, we'll, we'll be doing some applications um, using the problem solving or the solving techniques that we've learned this unit. So well, as we approach each of these problems today, um, we we'll kind of go through these steps or at least try to think through uh, which of these steps is helpful. So first of all, if your problem involves uh, any kind of shapes or uh, any, you know, anything where having a diagram is going to help, you're going to want to draw that diagram and label it with amounts that you know, side lengths that you know, any quantities that you know. Uh, for unknown quantities, you'll probably want to use uh, a variable like maybe an x for anything that's unknown. Uh, you'll have to think about what relationships are involved, like if it's an area of a rectangle, you know that area is length times width, or if it's area of a circle, you know that it's pi r squared. Um, for some of the problems, an equation will be given to you. Um, in others, you'll have to write the equation. You're going to substitute known and unknown quantities into that equation, like your unknown quantity would be your x. Known quantities would just be like if you know the one side is length 6, you'll sub that into the equation. And then we have our problem solving step. And this is where we're going to use the uh, strategies and techniques that we've been learning this unit. And then finally, uh, we will kind of check our solution um, to make sure that makes sense in the context of the problem. All right, so here's our first example. Um, Mike and Lachelle want to make a square patio. They have enough concrete uh, for the patio to have an area of 200 square feet. And we want to know to the nearest tenth of a foot, how long can the side of their square patio be? So we're going to start with that strategy of drawing a diagram. It's a square patio. Uh, we're going to label the diagram with our known and unknown quantities. We know that the area is 200 square feet, and we want to know the side length. So that's our unknown quantity, so we're going to label the side length with an x. Um, for a square, the two sides are the same, so I could put another x here if I wanted. All right, so um, the relationship that we're going to use for this is that the area of the square is the length times the width, and so I'm going to go ahead and put x squared for length times width, x times x. And in particular, we know that the area is 200, so I can substitute a 200 there. And now I have a little equation that I can solve. Um, this equation has a variable squared in it, so to, um, to solve for x, we want to apply a square root to both sides of our equation. When we do that, we've typically practiced putting that plus or minus symbol there, and that's fine here for a second as well. Um, when we take the square root of 200 in our calculator, we get 10 root 2. So we have positive and negative 10 root 2 is equal to x. So now we want to think about the context of our problem. Does the answer make sense? Do we need to modify our answer a little bit? So it asks me to report my answer to the nearest tenth of a foot. Uh, also, in the context of the problem, it doesn't make sense to have a negative. It doesn't fit into the context of the problem. So we know we need a positive answer. So we don't need to have that plus or minus symbol anymore. So since it's asking us to round to the nearest tenth, we don't want to report that exact um, radical answer from our calculator. We're going to push this converting button on our calculator right here. 
uh, above the enter button, and that will convert that radical into a decimal approximation. Um, so the calculator is showing a bunch of decimals. We want to round our answer to the nearest tenth, so we will just uh, keep that one decimal place, that tenth decimal place, so this will be 14.1 feet. So the side length of their patio needs to be 14.1 uh, feet at most. Otherwise, they won't have enough concrete. Okay, example two. Um, this one gives us a formula. Formula for the area of a circle you probably are familiar with from your uh, prior math classes. The area is equal to pi r squared, where r is the radius of the circle. So this problem says find the radius. So that's what we're going to try to figure out. Uh, find the radius of a circle whose area is 20 square feet. And this one also just gave us a diagram to look at. So we've got a circle. We know that that area of the circle is 20. We're going to try to figure out radius. So in our equation, um, in place of A for area, we can put 20. 20 is equal to pi r squared. Our goal is to calculate r, so we'll just use r as our variable this time instead of x, since r works really well with radius. Um, we're trying to get r squared by itself. Uh, we want to get that squared term isolated. We want to get r squared by itself, and right now it's being multiplied by pi. So we would like to divide both sides of our equation by pi. And maybe you're thinking, gosh, how do I divide by pi? Uh, just use that pi button in your calculator. 20 divided by pi. Or if you prefer, you can do 20 and use your fraction button and put the pi on the bottom. That's the same. Uh, 6.366. Um, since we're still in the middle of working the problem, I'm going to go ahead and keep a few decimal places here. And we have our r squared isolated now, so we're ready to apply the root to both sides of our equation. Now, normally we do put that plus or minus symbol when we apply a square root. In the context of this problem, a negative radius doesn't make sense, so we are going to have the positive answer. So we'll do the square root. Now, you could type in that 6.369... 6, 6 one, nine, seven, four, whatever. You could type all that in. Um, there's two other ways you could do it in your calculator, and I'll show you uh, just in case you find this handy. Um, right here down at the bottom in this uh, negative button, you see A and S above it. If you do second and push that button, it, it puts an ants in there, and that stands for answer or previous answer. So when I use that button, it's taking the square root of the previous answer, which is the square root of 6.3669. Um, so it's calculating that square root for me. A second way you can do it is, so here's my number again. I could do the square root, and I could go up and hit enter on that number. That will also give me the square root. Or, you know, of course, I could just type it in, 6.366198. I'd rather do one of the previous two, though. But either way, you're going to get the answer, 2.52. Uh, it didn't tell us how to round. Um, I'm going to round to the nearest hundred because I want to. So there's our radius. And that, because the area is in square feet, this would be uh, 2.52 feet. So it's just a little bit bigger than 2.5 foot in radius. Okay, example three. We've got a rectangular garden. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my rectangle. It has a width of 6 and a length of x squared plus 2. So I'm going to label it like this, length and width. It doesn't really matter which one, you know, how it's drawn exactly. Uh, we know that the total area is 108 square feet, and we are trying to figure out the value of x. So for a rectangle, area is length 
times width. So area, I can sub in 108. Uh, for length, I'm going to go ahead and put the 6. And for width, I'm going to put the x squared plus 2. And you could have reversed the order there, um, but I'd rather have the constant in front of the binomial personally, so that's why I put it in that order. But for multiplication, of course, you could have switched the order there. So uh, we're going to try to solve for x here. Um, you could distribute the 6 if you want, but I think I would prefer to just divide it straight away. So now I have 108, oh, whoops, I forgot to divide, 108 divided by 6. So now I have 18 is equal to x squared plus 2, because that's 6 I divided away. And now I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. So I get 16 is equal to x squared, and now I can apply my root. So I get positive and negative 4 is equal to x. So I need to kind of look at my problem and see if it makes sense. So if I, you know, this side of the rectangle is 6. If I sub in 4, that makes this side of the rectangle 4 squared plus 2, which is 18. Um, but I could actually sub in negative 4 and get the same answer. So maybe a little bit weirdly, because of the way this problem is worded, the negative 4 is actually fine. You know, if I had a rectangle and it said that the side was x, then we would not say that x could be negative 4. But x is not the side length. x squared plus 2 is the side length. So I, I could have x be negative 4, and that would be okay. A little bit weird there. All right, problem number 4. A square has an area of 72 square inches. Uh, what is the perimeter of the square? And we want our answer in simplified radical form. So we do not want to round or anything. So here's my diagram of my square. And the area is 72 square inches. Um, well, it's a square, so the two sides would have the same length. Um, eventually, since we're after the perimeter, eventually we're going to need to add up all four sides. But for now, I'm going to start with just seeing if I can calculate one side length. Um, for a square, the area is the side squared, or x times x for this one. And we know the area is 72. So we can apply our square root. And, you know, we could put that plus or minus symbol there, but in the context of the problem, since the side length is x, the negative doesn't really make sense for the context here. So the square root of 72, let's type that in our calculator. And we get 6 root 2. And again, I know it's going to be positive because it's the length of the side. Well, that does not answer our question. That is one side length. Our question is what is the perimeter? Well, the perimeter is all the way around. So this one is 6 root 2, this one is 6 root 2, this one is 6 root 2, and this one is 6 root 2. They're all the same because it's a square. So there's two ways you could get the perimeter here. You could say, okay, I have four sides. They're all the same. Four times that 6 root 2 gives me uh, 24 root 2. And, you know, if you weren't sure maybe how to calculate that, you can absolutely type that in your calculator. 4 times 6 root 2 to get 24 root 2. Or the other way you could think about it is I need to add up all the sides. 6 root 2 plus 6 root 2, whoops, plus 6 root 2 plus 6 root 2. And if you add all of those up, oh, that's a lot of calculator buttons. Got some speedy calculator skills right here. 6 root 2 plus 6 root 2 plus 6 root 2 plus 6 root 2. It's the same, 24 root 2. So you can kind of choose whether, you know, you see it better by multiplying by four sides or whether you want to add up the four sides individually. So you can decide. 
Um, either way, we got our exact simplified radical answer for the perimeter. Okay, example five, solve for the unknown side of each triangle. All right, well, um, these are right triangles, so you might recall the Pythagorean theorem. For a right triangle, the leg squared plus the other leg squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. The hypotenuse has to be C in this case. So for my triangle here, we've got A and B and C. So if I put that into the Pythagorean theorem, I have X squared plus 24 squared is equal to 25 squared. So we need to solve for x squared. Um, just one word of caution, I guess. Sometimes I will see kids think that they can subtract like this and get 1 squared. But that does not work. That's an error. Um, in our order of operations, exponents are done before um, addition and subtraction. So we, we want to figure out what these numbers are and then we can subtract. So 24 squared is uh, 576. And 25 squared is 625. So you can see that when we subtract those, we do not get 1. We get x squared is equal to 49. So then when we apply our root, we get x is equal to 7. In the context, it doesn't make sense for a triangle to have a negative side length, so we would just uh, say that the side length is 7 positive 7. Let's try that Pythagorean theorem again, a little different this time. We've got A and B for our two legs, and then the C has to be the 8. So leg squared plus other leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. Well, we can combine these two terms. That's 2x squared equals 64. We can divide both sides of our equation by 2. And then our final step would be to apply the square root to both sides. Now again, in the context, we don't need to worry about negative because we can't have a negative side of a right triangle. So we get x is equal to, and the square root of 32 is 4 root 2. All right, um, you should try the first five problems on the practice, pause the video, work on those, see how you do, and then hop back in here and work on the rest of them. Okay, we have a couple more problems. Um, first one is uh, objects falling to the ground. So if you drop an object, say from the top of a cliff, gravity is pulling that object down and it causing, them, ca causing the object to accelerate. So at first, it's kind of falling slowly, and it picks up speed so that, you know, between three and four seconds, it falls really far, but then between four and five seconds, it falls even farther. Um, it's going faster and faster and faster. Uh, so if you ever take a physics class, you'll learn all about um, the equations that model the motions of objects in the world. Um, in this class, I'm going to give you those equations because you aren't in a physics class and you don't know how to build these equations on your own yet. Um, but, but if I, you know, I'll give you the equations and we'll certainly be able to solve them. Our, our focus is on methods of solving. So our first one, picture uh, somebody, Christy, uh, standing on this bridge in China. Uh, it's 100, and, 100 meters above the river there. So Christy drops her sunglasses, and we want to figure out how long those sunglasses are falling before they hit the ground. Um, so the relationship between the initial height 
of an object and the time until it hits the ground can be modeled by this equation. Um, in this context, um, t is measured in seconds. I forgot to write that in there. So the height that Christie is at is 100 meters. So 100 is equal to 4.9 t squared. So we need to divide by 4.9. So 100 divided by 4.9 is going to give us 20.4. And then we're ready to apply the square root to our equation. Uh, in the context, the negative solution doesn't really make sense because we don't want to say that the sunglasses fell for negative 8 seconds or whatever. That doesn't make sense. So we know we're going to have our positive root. So the square root of 20.4... is four point, about 4.5 seconds. So when she was 100 meters high, it took four and a half seconds for uh, the sunglasses to hit the ground or hit the river. Uh, what if she had been on the top of Angel's Landing and had dropped her sunglasses? Well, the height of Angel's Landing above the valley floor is 454 meters. So our height is 454. We're going to, again, divide by 4.9. 4.9 is related to the gravitational constant of our Earth. It's not the gravitational constant, but it's related to it. Uh, 454 divided by 4.9 gives us 92.65. And we're going to apply the square root to our equation. We normally would include both a positive and negative solution. In our context, the negative solution doesn't make sense. So we'll just keep our positive root, 92.653. That gives us a time of about 9.6 seconds of falling. Okay, one last context. Uh, police officers uh, investigating car accidents will measure the length of the skid marks. And the length of the skid mark combined with um, the condition of the pavement, like whether it's dry or wet and what it's made of, uh, can help determine, so they'll measure the skid marks to help determine the speed of the car. So for a dry asphalt road, the length of the skid marks, L, is related to speed by the equation L is equal to 1 24th S squared. So this is the, the length of the skid, and this is speed. Uh, in this context, the speed is measured in miles per hour, and the length of the skid is measured in feet. So in our context right here, after a car accident, the skid marks for one of the cars measured 190 feet long. So that's um, the length of the skid. Uh, to the nearest tenth, we want to calculate the speed of the car before the brakes were applied. So um, we can substitute 190 in for L 190 is equal to 1 24th of s squared. Our goal is to solve for s. So this fraction, 1 over 24, the way that we would undo that fraction or the way that we'll get this s squared isolated is that we're going to multiply both sides of our equation by 24. That's going to cancel out. So now we have 24 times 190, that's 4,560, that's equal to s squared. And now we can apply our square root 
to get our answer. So 67.5 is S. Now S, speed, is measured in miles per hour in this problem with this equation. So that's 67 and a half miles per hour is the speed of the car. Uh, I didn't put my plus or minus symbol here. That's because in context of this problem, negative speed does not make sense. So we know that it's going to be a positive speed for this context. All right. Let us know if you have any questions. Thanks so much.